sorry I lost you all. Um, uh, I'm going to try and continue this again. In fact, maybe I should just start all over again. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because it is a beautiful day to be able to witness the power and the wonder and the glory of God at work in our lives right now, always, and forever. And so here we are with Facebook Live. And hey, when you do things live, things happen. So anyway, here we are. And this is the day that God has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is historically known as Pentecost Sunday. And so I want to talk a little bit about Pentecost and even go back before that and um, let you know that, that, that the, the church calendar actually last week would have been recognized as Ascension Day. And, um, but I, we didn't talk about Ascension Day because we were too busy talking about Memorial Day. So I want to talk a little bit about Ascension Day and then also tie that in with Pentecost and, 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 and the like. But before we do, let's stop and let's have a moment of prayer. Wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing, you can just join us for a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious time where we can be together through uh, this amazing technology to be able to, to, to join our, our, our spirits uh, through you and with you. And so we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and for this privilege and for this time. We love you, Lord. Amen. And um, so I was, I was reading some scripture. Let's see. Here's here's my phone. Hang on just a second. Got to pop out and grab my grab my wife's phone because my phone's being used for for the for for this uh, broadcast. And I had my scripture. Pulled up, but since we had some other technical difficulties, uh, I tried to use my wife's phone, and then my phone started working. So hopefully everything's going to be good there. Uh, let's see. And I want to read to you. I was reading the Good News Bible translation of Romans eight, and I just love the way it talked about um, human nature and, and God's nature. And so I'm going to start reading with. Actually, verse 4. Um, no, it looks... No, verse 5. Those who live as their human nature tells them to have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. Those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the spirit results in life and peace. And so people become enemies of God when they are controlled by their human nature. For they do not obey God's laws, and in fact they cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. But you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you to. If in fact God's Spirit lives in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him, but if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you, because you have been put right with God, even though your bodies are going to die because of sin. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies. So then, my brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as human nature wants us to. For if you live according to your human nature, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. You know, Pentecost Sunday is all about the presence of the Holy Spirit coming into our, coming into human existence. Um, but going back, I mentioned earlier that what we wanted to talk about is a little bit about Ascension Sunday, and then tying that in with Pentecost Sunday. Let me go back, because we have the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday. Everybody celebrates that; it's the greatest day ever, and people 
realize that he conquered the grave, he conquered death, and he, and he lives and walks among us. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is that Jesus did not physically, his physical body did not ascend into heaven for 40 days. For 40 days, he walked among people on earth, touching them, being with them, cooking for them. He went out and he met the, the apostles on the Sea of Galilee and he cooked breakfast for them. How cool would that be to have Jesus sitting on the shore cooking fish when you got off the boat? Here, have a cup of coffee. Here's your, did you want some eggs? Here's some eggs. All of a sudden, Jesus is the short order cooking. Amazing. Well, that's the way it was. And he cooked for the apostles, and, and, he, and he accosted Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? He said, of course I do, Jesus. I love you. He did it three times over. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Uh, which coincides with how many times Peter betrayed Jesus. Um, not a coincidence, I don't think. He wanted that human nature, that human mindset of Peter be transcended into the spiritual nature of the of the reality of who he is, of who God is, of who Jesus is, of what grace is. And so he needed to really get within the mind of Peter. So he did it over and over again. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? He continued to walk with the people on the road to Emmaus. And he continued to to, to be among the apostles and the, and the and everyone on planet Earth on planet Earth. I mean, he was, he was there. He was physically present for 40 days. 40 days later, he ascended into heaven. You know, I, my my uh, three-year-old grandson had a, had a birthday party a few weeks ago. He turned three, and he had a Peppa Pig party. Now, if you have, if you have, or, or know of, uh, preschool age children, you know about Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig is the number one preschool character uh, that there is. I mean, nobody beats Peppa Pig. Um, all of my grandkids watch him uh, all the time. They watch it online. They have these little episodes. He's, and no matter what country I go in, I, you find Peppa Pig translated into all of these languages. He is worldwide. He is probably one of the most famous most famous characters among preschoolers in the world. You learn something new. You see, you come to Facebook Live, listen to Robert Schuler, and learn something new. Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig in, it has a, it, I think it's made in, originally in, in, in somewhere in Britain because he's got a, he has a um, British accent, and, and uh, as a result of that, my grandson's growing up with a British accent. But anyhow, um, that was Peppa Pig. So we had this Peppa Pig party. Oh, my wife just let me know it's not a he, it's a she. Peppa is a she. You could have just said so, Donna, but that's okay. So, yeah, I've always thought of Peppa as a he, but it isn't. It's a she. So anyway, we're having this birthday party, with Peppa Pig birthday party. One of the things we we, we did at the party is we, we got a giant balloon giant meaning it's it's as tall as as my grandson and it's helium filled and it's Peppa Pig and it has weighted shoes and with those weighted shoes Peppa Pig would would walk and he absolutely loved this balloon and he was playing with it in the park and playing all over the place and all of a sudden he decides he's going to take Peppa Pig's shoes off so Peppa Pig takes his shoes off, and you know what happens to a helium balloon without weights. It takes off, and Peppa Pig ascended, and he started crying, and he just could, Peppa Pig just continued to go until he became uh, invisible to our sight, and he was gone. That was it. Peppa Pig's gone. Now, when you think about us, Ascension Sunday, it almost feels as if that's the way God entered Jesus entered heaven, where he simply ascended, kind of like Peppa Pig ascended into these clouds and then disappeared. And as a result of that, it's been a, a, a lot of your, your, a lot of your biblical critics will look at that and say, "Well, clearly that goes against the physics of of, 
uh, against uh, regular physics, and therefore it's impossible that he just ascended like that into heaven. Well, that could be the case where, where that was, but please don't ever underestimate the power of God to do things, to, to violate our human physics, because God isn't limited to our human physics. In fact, we know it's possible to transcend the physics that we know based upon the, the, the mathematical equations that we see in quantum, mecha quantum mechanics today. Quantum mechanics today is, has, has proven that there are multiple dimensions.